It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back. It is your Feel Good Breakfast show. And yes, it's Tuesday. We like to talk on various topics, including health, but also relationships. Now, we're about to dive into a relationship dilemma. And this is a bit of a scenario we would like to paint for you. Mm, so it's kind of just a jumping off point. So this is theoretical, but it's so our amazing guests have something to jump off from. So let's set the tone here. My girlfriend suffers from depression. I naturally tend to fall into a caretaker role and I tend not to ask for things when I know my girlfriend is struggling, but she's been struggling for a while now. Every conversation is about her struggles. Right now, she is isolating and not responding to my texts. I am sick right now and I just want to be taken care of. My girlfriend was at my apartment all week last week when she was sick. I definitely got it from her and I took care of her, made her soup, gave her cold milk made her tea, slept on the couch when she was coughing at night. Now that she is isolating and I'm here dealing with my own sickness, all I want deep down is for her to take care of me like I did for her, but I can't ask her right now. She is in a bad place and I have tried my best to help her, but I don't know what else I can do. The one time she has responded to me, she said she doesn't want to feel better. Mm. Wow. So now we're asking questions. How do I deal with this? What can I do? Do I just accept that sometimes things aren't a, a reciprocated? Is it, it feel, felt pretty uneven for a while, but when I bring up my wants and needs, she tends to get defensive. At the end of the day, I want her to be okay and I want to be there for her, but I also want to be taken care of. Now, joining us right now to chat about this, uh, to give their professional advice, is registered counselor Delia Strondel and Sadia Southgate, who is a registered counselor and psychology supervisor. Can we give them a warm welcome to that very Yay. loaded intro? <laughs> Yo, oui, we, I could literally feel kind of the, the <laughs> mental arithmetic going on around us. I'm glad we went into such granular detail with that because it does get real. When you're caught in one of these depression loops, I'm going to call it, because it often feels like you're just repeating the same cycle over and over again. Maybe it's a good place to start with practicality. So maybe Delia, I'm going to start with you. With depression, we've got to identify it, call it out first and then we can start the work that's required to get us across the line. But what is depression? What do those red flags look like? Oi, so depression, I think the hard part about it is it's become, the word has become so assimilated into our everyday language that every second person is depressed. But actual depression, diagnosable depression, is a chronic low mood that lasts for the majority of the day it lasts every day for at least two weeks running and it's accompanied by a couple of other things like um, lapses in concentration, uh, changes in eating habits, sleeping habits and I think the big one is that there's a complete loss of joy. Yeah. You can no longer take part in the things that, that used to bring me joy. Yeah. The dopamine button don't work no more. <laughs> no, I'm working. pressing it, I'm pressing it, I'm pressing it. Nothing's working. Now, we, we are looking at this in a relationship scenario. Mm. So perhaps, Sadia, you can shed some light. Is it possible for individuals that are in a relationship and one of the partners suffer from depression for it to still be a healthy, happy relationship? Mm. Yes, absolutely. I do believe that once there's communication and, you know, patience, which is a very big thing, because you need to understand where your partner's coming from, because depression is not just an easy thing, something that, you know... It's not a know, choice. It's not a quick fix It's not fix situational, either. yeah. Yes, and it's not something that we fix today and then it's gone tomorrow. So it's definitely something, just like any other relationship, that can fl flourish and grow. That too can grow with understanding and patience and with the help and support, not from just practitioners, but from your family members and your friends that is able to walk alongside you and understand. And once you are educated as both parties about what depression is, how you can help and support your partner through that, then most definitely you can make it work. Um, it's like a fitness. So I kind of think of depression as an injury. Um, just like you have to fix another injury, and if it's a serious injury, something that speaks to the makeup of your body, i.e. the makeup of your brain, you've got to keep working on it to balance that out. If you've got a, a weak knee, you keep training that knee and you strengthen it. Just by that same token, you've got to put in the work. Mm -hmm. But it's difficult when you're putting in the work for your partner and then you yourself are compromised, like our, our imaginary James. Well, it might be a real person, <laughs> I don't know. Um, 
but there is something very difficult about taking care of others when your own cup mm -hmm. isn't full or just empty. How do we approach, or approach that gateway? You, you don't. <laughs> you, you can't do it. You, you can't. You cannot make somebody else better. You can certainly support them. You can offer them as much love as you have capacity to give. I think that's, that's where this dilemma or, or this problems really starts arising is I give, 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 give. Well, the gent gives, gives, yeah. gives, 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 gives. Partners taking, 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 and there isn't that reciprocity. And then there's feelings of resentment or there's feelings of lack of self-worth. And round Whatever and your round childhood round pathology go, is, just well, boom, yeah. Okay, yeah, let's just feed it all in there. So, you know, it, 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 it then starts to spiral and, and it, it can get really messy. But the, the bottom line is, he can't walk this journey for her. She's got to put in the effort, she's got to be willing. He can offer support, certainly go for counseling together. Help to facilitate that, that transition. Absolutely, yeah. have a good environment, but he can't do the work. Bottom line is, and I, I mean, I caught this on a social media meme, as most of the gems that we get these days come, but you can't make someone else happy. Yep. Doesn't, happiness doesn't work like that. It doesn't come from an external source. Mm. Yeah. Well, let's look at the scenario now in the, in the sense that what, what's, what is he going through now emotionally and, and, and mentally? Because here he has given his partner all the support and in a moment where he needs some support, she's going through her own things, which it seems like he is trying to be understanding, mm -hmm. but it's a very difficult position. I think so often in real life, that is the case with someone that's perhaps undiagnosed with depression or haven't taken care of their depression. The partner is suffering from it emotionally and mentally. He state. sounds depressed. <laughs> but associate, what is the impact yeah. on that individual? I think, you know, psychologically and emotionally, as you said, Graham, he's, he sounds depressed because essentially the people that we spend our time with, most times we become like them. And for him, he's also experiencing some feelings of isolation and withdrawal and a lot of self-doubt because now what he's giving, he's not getting back. And as you were saying earlier on, how do you fill that cup? Because you can't pull from an empty cup. So essentially, this cup is empty and there's nothing left to give. And for him, he's already displaying symptoms of depression. So it's important for him to be aware of that. And if there's any challenges that he has, there's someone maybe that he can speak to about his thoughts and his feelings that is able to support him in that. And with regards to speaking to his partner about what is happening because depression is such a sensitive topic generally to be able to first notice what her capacity is like and find kind of that gap to be able to speak to her about what it get is her that advice. he is. Precisely. Get her advice, get her thinking proactively in a slightly different way and it's not about climbing the mountain. I think the most important thing to remember here is it's that first step. It's that just getting out of bed in the morning to do something could be the most powerful step that you take in this kind of journey. We know that it is a very dark place to be and often the person who is going through the depression doesn't understand the knock-on effect of what their life is doing to those around them. But it requires those around them to take a step, otherwise it's not going to shift. That's what I've taken out of this. You have to work on it. And the joy is when you're in relationship, you can work on it together and find out the best parts of each other. So let us know what your thoughts are on this particular situation. Um, you can head on over to our social media pages. Please weigh in if you've got any questions. We've got an amazing panel here to plug into this morning. And please drop us a, a, a spicy WhatsApp a voice note 063 If you're currently going through something like this at the moment, if you yourself are feeling depressed, maybe your partner's been caught in that deep, dark pit for too long, Take that first step with us today. We'll see you just now. Yeah, well, you can also visit sadac.org and Brilliant. we've got those details on your screen for the South African Depression and Anxiety Group. So you can reach out to them, give them a call or visit the website. But we are taking a quick break on your Feel Good Breakfast show. When we get back, we're going to continue this conversation and really help give you the tools you need to better equip yourself if you find yourself in this situation. Mm, and then a beautifully cooked meal makes us all feel better. And as we fast approach the Eid celebrations, just look at that. A beautiful butter chicken for your Eid table. That's and a whole lot more on the way. It's my feel good breakfast show. 
Welcome back. You're just in time as we continue our conversation with registered councillor Delia Strondel and Sadia Southgate, who is a registered councillor and psychology supervisor. Now, we've been delving into the topic of depression in a relationship, how to navigate it and how to be constructive with your partner. We also asked you on social media for your feedback. So before we get into those comments, I just feel like we need to wrap this up. Delia and Sadia, we had this scenario where the gentleman was struggling he gave his partner all the support she needed but while she's battling with her depression he feels unsupported in his scenario do you perhaps have any last minute advice for someone that finds themselves in that position the first thing particular to, to this situation is he's got to get well first okay so he's got a cold he's grumpy, he's not able to think clearly, there's a whole lot going on in the head other than just thoughts. So he's got to get well. Once he's well, then he can start taking maybe a step back, evaluating the relationship, evaluating why did we get together in the first place, what other dynamics exist other than me being the carer and she needing all the caregiving. Um, yeah, and, okay. and then take it from there and, and try and build something going forward okay and Sadia perhaps do you have any advice for this gentleman yes yes absolutely it does sound like he loves her because he wouldn't be as supportive and loving towards her if he didn't care for her so it does sound like his intentions are good to be there for her so professionally I would say to speak to a loved one a family member or someone as I mentioned that he can trust but also to seek professional help in terms of how he can love and support her to educate himself around what depression is how we can be there for her because oftentimes we think that therapy and counseling is only there for the people that are experiencing the depression but it's also for those that are trying to understand what it really is and how can I love and support my my loved one because Essentially, it does sound like she's quite trapped, but he's also kind of been entangled in that as well. So, as you said earlier on, is for him to first get well. That's yeah. the most important thing. And then evaluate what the intention is and the goal is moving forward. Okay, the goal is moving forward. Now, we painted the scenario, we left it on social media, and you came through with some comments. So, let's have a look. First up was James Mentor that says... Bra, unless she's your wife, leave her and let her family and friends help take care of her. You have no obligation to be part of her struggles. Go find the person you are looking for in a relationship and live your best life. Stop thinking you are a husband when you're just a boyfriend. When you're not happy in your relationship, just walk away. Um, you don't owe your girlfriend nothing and neither does she owe you anything. So... Obviously, James has a very, in my opinion, a selfish approach towards this relationship. Um, perhaps the two of you, if you'd love to weigh in on that comment, I personally find it very harsh. I don't yeah. think you just walk <laughs> away the minute something bad happens yes. in a relationship. You kind of help, especially if you love that person, you help them through it. Mm, absolutely. Do you want, if, <laughs> um, if you are... It, it is a harsh one and, and he's even said there, you know, let her friends and family help. Is the boyfriend not part of the friends slash family group? You yeah. Know, it, it, so on the one hand he's saying she needs the support but just not from you. And I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I, I think that the support is, is needed all round. Um, it possibly sounds a bit one-sided though, like he's giving all the support. And maybe what we can take from this message is she can broaden that support base a bit, yeah. perhaps. Yeah. So that it doesn't all just fall on his mm. plate. Yeah. We got another comment through from Colleen LaRue saying, I suffered from PTSD and it wasn't for the love, support, patience and understanding from my husband, my son and my parents and my family and friends. I don't know how I would have been able to cope and overcome. Mm. And again, this talks to the community. It, it, it takes your village to help you through these difficult and dark times. Hmm. Perhaps, Sadia, we can end this off and hopefully on a positive note for those individuals that perhaps find themselves in a similar scenario like we've painted. How can we just leave them with something that will make them feel a little bit optimistic? Hmm. You know, you said it, it takes basically a village, you know, to be able to support and love that loved one because essentially she feels trapped 
and that can like build a wall not just between you and your loved ones but even just in and around your loved ones as well so once they are trapped inside that wall it's very difficult to get them outside of that and depression is and can be a very lonely journey but with the help and support and very important as she said patience because mm. As I mentioned, it's not a quick fix. So every day looks different, every hour looks different. So perhaps in one hour she may feel like, you know, the, her best self and in the next hour she's not her best self. So it's important to practice that patience, but to also practice gentleness because we don't know how she's feeling and what moments she's going through or what exactly she's going through. So educating ourselves again about what is that she's going through, get everybody together and kind of not necessarily have an intervention plan, but something similar to be able to be there for her and also walk alongside her in this journey so that she doesn't feel alone. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Well, to the both of you, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for parting your knowledge. And of course, we do have those details on our screen right now. The South African Depression and Anxiety Group, you can visit them at sadac.org or you can call them with that number on your screen at 0800 567 567. That is the number for you to call.